your soldiers of Gondor. No matter what comes through that gate, you will stand your ground. And his name is Chelsea! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we're going to be painting some Mordor Trolls as quickly as possible. We're aiming for that holy triad of the darker recess, the mid-tone of the colour you actually want, and then a highlight. But we're not going to be faffing on with anything fancy like edge highlighting or actually spending time on it. We're just going to slop some paint on, dry brush the whole of the bastard, and then wash it and call it a day. First things first is to start with a base coat. Now I'm going to be following the inside out painting methodology which is to start with the most recessed detail first and then work your way up to the things on the outside. So if a dude's wearing a helmet, you've got his face then his helmet. If you paint the face first then paint the helmet, you're not going to mess the face up when you paint the helmet. Yeah, basically. Easy. So I am lazy so I'm going to be airbrushing a primer onto it, that's roughly the colour I want. This uh, Vallejo skeleton bony madness. Uh, now any sort of like greeny, really pale flesh will do, we're going to be dry brushing and we're going to be shading it so it doesn't really matter too much if you uh, pick a different colour, just as long as it's not like a really pinky flesh colour, we're going to be grand. Now moving on to the first bit of the base coat, I'm going to be using gold and yellow from Vallejo who put a drop on his teeth, toes and fingernails. Uh, it's just to separate them out. I have done them other colours for other trolls I've done. I've done darker ones, I've done other ones, but it just creates a nice bit of variation. But I think I've settled on the yellow being my favourite. Alright, now we're going to be painting all those nasty lumps all over the backs. Uh, I'm using a contrast paint called Gore Grunt of Fur. Uh, pretty much just because I want to use it up. Uh, I'm going to put some alternatives to all the contrast paints I used in proper Vallejo colours in the description. Uh, and I'll also stick a uh, colour conversion chart so you can convert to whatever paint range you actually use. Uh, so yeah, just cover all of these guys up on the, uh, all the lumpy bits on the backs. Uh, when If you're doing the Troll Chieftain, the lumps aren't really that pronounced, so I just sort of painted it all in. Uh, in areas, it's going to look strange, but we're then going to blend it all together with the dry brush later, so don't worry too much about it if it uh, doesn't look quite right. And you can always tidy it up with your base coat as well, don't worry. Uh, don't fix any mistakes now, wait till we're going to be ready to wash it before you do any of that, because you can just do it all at once, save time. Now for all the leather straps, I'm using snake bite leather. Again, I'll put an alternative in. Uh, the description. Uh, so just all the leather straps all around. I also did the loincloths with this but I changed my mind on that so your mileage may vary but I decided to go with a different colour later on for those. So yeah just all the straps, get them on, sorted, nice easy. For a bit of variation now I've got Saigor Brown uh, which is a really 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 dark brown. Uh, just to paint all of the wooden areas, uh, yep, so just the bottoms of the drums, uh, the handles of his uh, bongo bongers, I don't know what you call them, drumsticks? Yeah, drumsticks. And uh, there's a few little bits on the uh, hilt of the sword thing that the chieftain's got that you're going to want to catch. And just try a little bit harder not to make a mistake with this one, because it's going to be a bit harder to cover with it being so dark. Now this is a bit of Black Templar. Now I would actually recommend you use Black Templar because it's just a really, really awesome uh, base colour to use for black. Uh, just for the hair and that guy's sideburns. Uh, nice, quick and easy step for that one. Uh, then we're going to move into Steel Legion Drab and we're going to paint the drum skins uh, with a few thin coats and uh, with all of the fabric bits, so those like uh, support things on his shoulders I painted with that and the uh, loincloths I did, so I went over the uh, snake bite leather from earlier and just replaced it with that because I wanted a bit more variation to the straps. And with that all of the base coats are now done, so we're going to go back in with the original fleshy colour and we're going to cover over any mistakes, so I've got a little error here I made on his arm with the straps, just cover over all of that, a couple of thin coats if you need to. Now onto the dry brush. Now essentially what we're going to do now is now we've got all of these flesh tones on, before we do anything with the metal, we're going to dry brush the whole thing. Just everything the same colour. Uh, I'm using Tyrant Skull here, but any sort of bony white will do. Uh, just over absolutely everything. Give it a good old dry brush. 
it's a bit hard to take to really see it on this recording because the, I think I've overblown the exposure a bit. I can't really tell. I don't know how to work cameras. Uh, but it looked a little bit more varied in real life on the skin parts. Uh, but yep, just dry brush the whole thing. It's going to look really dusty. Don't worry, it will be awesome. Now we need to do some base coats for all the metal stuff, so I'm painting it all black. Uh, a lot of metallic paints are really translucent, so you're going to need to put down a better base coat if you've got a really light colour down, just so that it actually sticks to it. Uh, generally speaking, for silver you want black, and for gold you want like a ready brown. Uh, but yeah, it'll just give you a much nicer coverage on your silver, and you won't have it all gunked up. So just one quick coat of black over all of the metallic parts, and we're golden. Now onto the metal, I've got this pig iron from Formula P3, it's essentially just lead belcher. Now you just want to do a nice thin coat over all of the metal here, uh, everything that you painted black before. Give it one nice coat and we're good to go. Being careful not to get it on anywhere that you've uh, done any of the dry brushing on, but you can fix it with some really thinned out uh, base and stuff, so don't worry if you make too many mistakes. Uh, but yeah, just try and be careful though with this one. You're also going to want to catch the uh, little bolty bits on the uh, on the drum itself and that little metal band just to have a bit of variation. And there's also these uh, weird metal rings on his back where the uh, straps connect. You just want to hit them with a little bit of your uh, dark metallic gun metal as well. If you have a head pose that has an open mouth, you're going to want to get some Blood Angels Red and just plonk that inside of it just to cover it. Uh, we don't need to bother highlighting it if you use the contrast paint, but if you don't, I would say just an orange highlight. Uh, I also glued some rocks onto the base of mine, uh, so I just gave them a hit of London grey, just a nice dark grey, uh, just to give them a base coat. Uh, don't know why I did it now, it just seemed like a point. I think I was waiting for the metal to dry before I could wash it. Uh, but yeah, just hit them with a nice base coat. Uh, then you're going to want to come in with an off-white. I've got Corax white here, which is my favourite for highlighting stone. And you're just going to want to hit those rocks with a nice dry brush as well. There we go. Looking beautiful. Stone is so easy to paint. I would, I never bother doing anything more detailed than that. Ever. It just, the, the way the dry brush hits it is always perfect. And uh, now for the base itself, I've got sterling mud. Now, there are much cheaper ways to base your minis than to use this stuff. Uh, but this is probably one of the quicker ones. You just have to slop it on. You don't need to paint it. Uh, but I am starting to move away from using these GW texture paints a bit and using stuff from uh, uh, just stuff that's lying around the house. I've got a big 20 kilo bag of play sand. You can just stick that down with a bit too much PVA and it'll give you a similar effect. You've then just got to paint it brown. Uh, but this stuff is great if you're just looking for a simple boom on we go. Amazing job. It's one of the best texture basing texture paints out there if you want to just use a texture. And again, just on this guy, you just want to poke it around and get it in every step. I do really like the Games Workshop little sculpty tool thing, the little silicon spreader thing they sell with alongside of it. Uh, it just doesn't stick to it. It spreads it around really nice. It's hell a hell of a lot more than it should be. I think it's like four quid and it's just this little pokey stick, but it is good. So I would recommend picking one up if you're going to use these. Onto the fun stage. Now we're just going to wash the whole thing with Agrax Earthshade. Just slop it over every inch of the model. If it's pooling too much in one place, uh, then just get a dry brush and put it up against the pool and it'll suck it all into the brush with capillary action. No bother. Uh, make sure you do this one section at a time, otherwise you're going to end up with tide marks. I did actually get some tide marks on my drum one, uh, which I wasn't too happy on, uh, which I fixed just with a little bit of uh, black mixed with Steel Legion Drab, uh, watered down a bit. To finish off the mud, we're now just going to give all the mud a very light dry brush of Zandri Dust, uh, just all over it. Uh, try not to put much pressure on because otherwise it's going to look weird and streaky, so you just want to literally drag the brush over without any pressure down. Uh, just let it do its thing, get it on, you can do multiple passes, it's better to uh, just take your time with it a little bit more than that than try to just force it to dry brush on because otherwise you're just going to end up looking too dusty and it'll look a bit like a desert. For the rims of the bases, I always paint them black. Uh, I've been having a bit of bother with the thin black paint chipping off of them, my rims, my bases, so I've been redoing them all with Vallejo Black Surface Primer. Uh, this is an airbrush primer, but it can be brushed on. 
uh, just did two thin coats, looks great and it's not going anywhere. Alright, so the final step before we call it a job done for the paint inside of it is to varnish. Uh, I'm a really big fan of varnishing everything I paint, it'll protect your paint job, but more than that, especially with these ultra matte ones, uh, it's also going to tie everything together, so we've all had the situation where we haven't mixed our uh, shades fully and we've got these really glossy recesses or anything like that. If you hit it with a matte uh, varnish over the top, it just brings it all together, everything looks fine. Only downside to that is it is going to dull your metal. With I mean, with a Mordor Troll, it's going to be dull metal anyway, so that's like something I'm aiming for. Uh, but with others, what you're going to want to do is either do your metal after your varnish, you can paint over it if you're using a, uh, a matte varnish, so no problem there. Or uh, you're then going to want to like, just give a quick little dry brush over the top of the metal after the varnish, just to bring back that sheen. But yeah, I'd highly recommend varnishing your minis. It makes the paint job last so much longer, and it really does just bring it all together. Also, if you've seen my previous videos, you'll know that I'm a big advocate of this AK Interactive Ultramat. Uh, just, it's just the best one you can buy. It really is just the best one you can buy, especially out of an airbrush. But I mean, it can be brushed on. You just need to be careful not to let it pool. Otherwise, you'll have little white recesses. Uh, but yeah, it's just amazing. It's absolutely the best varnish on the market. So now on to flocking, what you're going to want to do is you want to get some autumn mix, you want to get some summer mix and you want to get some spring mix and you want to mix it all together beautifully into a really nice party mix. Now this is going to be a lovely blended flock that's going to work really really well, it's going to look nice, uh, especially if you're lazy like me. Uh, and this is all 2mm flock as well. What I'd also recommend is getting some tufts just to add some uh, variation in height, you can get these from the... Uh, Zorp Zorp web store which I'll link below. There's also available on eBay and stuff But I mean chop around find the ones you like. I like the uh, loops APS ones you can get from Zorp Zorp though uh, So to start with you're going to want to coat the whole base with PVA glue uh, Leaving some little patches where there's not going to be any grass just to create like a, a well-trodden plane sort of effect Then we're going to come in with these tufts so you just want to get your tweezers and you just want to plonk them down uh, I tend to put them so that the uh, most of the edges are covered by the PVA so that you get a nice permanent bond but for that instant grab so that they don't slide around I like to have at least some of the glue on the bottom of them fix on or just straight onto the base just so they actually stick and don't slide all over the shop. Now it's time to grab all that 2mm flock and you're going to want to air it out a bit just to air it out. You're going to want to just and no, muddle it so that it's all separated and then just sprinkle it in between your fingers over the top of the base, let it go on, pile it up high, just keep going with all of that, cover the whole of it, and then once it's totally covered, move your excess out the way and you're going to want to just uh, tip it on its side and slightly tap it so that all of the excess comes off. Beautiful. Now my next step is to run my thumb along the edge, poking it upwards wherever the flock actually connects to the edge of the base so that you're not smushing it round sideways. Uh, just get all of that nice and tidy. Uh, this is a really awkward camera angle to actually record this on, uh, but the following step is to then hold it level, put your head to its the side of it, and just very gently blow it horizontally so that it all sort of goes upwards so it doesn't just look like a clump of... Uh, static grass it actually looks like grass coming out of the ground uh, you can get better results for this if you uh, use a static grass applicator which is one of these electric doodads that you uh, sort of shake it over the top but I find them really hard to do for model bases they're more for like big scenery projects but uh, I like this effect anyway so I don't bother getting my static grass applicator out for it uh, once that's all done you're just gonna want to leave it to dry and once it's absolutely bone dry the job is done and we have conquered these trolls. And there we have it. That's the guys all done. Really quick and easy. Super fun. Now these guys took me just under an hour and 10 minutes of hands on painting time. If we don't include the time it took for all the little stages to dry. A uh, little bit of advice when you're in that sort of situation. 
work on something else. Go prime some other models, get some bases ready, uh, put some finishing touches to another project. Try not to have too many projects on the go at one time, but don't just sit around procrastinating or scrolling through Reddit while you've got uh, while you've got time to kill while you're waiting on something to dry. Uh, so we've got the Chieftain and the Drummer that I finished uh, for this tutorial and uh, two regular Mordor Trolls I painted using the exact same methodology a while ago. Uh, I varied up the nails a bit in some of them, so I've used uh, some darker stu darker nails for the other ones, some blacks, just add some variety. And we've also got the Isengard Troll I did a while ago. Uh, you can follow this exact same painting tutorial to do it, uh, but for the skin, start with the Mechanica Standard Grey. Uh, dry brush it with a lighter grey and then wash it with Null Oil rather than Agrax and you'll get the exact same effect you can see there. Really fun, really good. So, if you guys want to see more, uh, please feel free to subscribe or like the video, give me a comment if you've got anything to say or any questions to ask. Uh, check out the description as well, I'll put a link to uh, the Zorp Zorp web store where you can buy that Luke's apps uh, flock and all that jazz that we used in the video today. And uh, yeah, cracking. Away we go. See you in the next one, guys.